we start the new year right by learning a lesson from an apocalypse movie? That's what we'll talk about today. Regina, you might as well face facts, Samantha. The whole burden of civilization has fallen upon us. Samantha, what's that supposed to mean? Regina, it means we do not cross against the light. Night of the Comet. Today we're going to talk about the movie Night of the Comet. I know it's probably a movie you haven't seen, but we're going to talk about what kind of lessons we can learn from a post-apocalyptic movie. What you may not know is I like to do movie podcasts during the holidays. We've got a lot of things going on. We don't have to plan our future lives right now. This movie is an 80s apocalypse movie. And if you're in the 80s, it was very stereotypical of what you would see from an 80s movie, which is primarily why I love it. In the movie itself, it has Catherine Mary Stewart. Everyone wanted to be Catherine Mary Stewart when I was growing up, and she had the best hair on the planet. Plus, she was always able to have fun with herself and in her movies by being in things like The Last Starfighter, Night of the Comet, and Weekend at Bernie's. It also has Robert Beltrain, who was Chakotay in Star Trek Voyager. The fun thing about Night of the Comet, well, maybe not fun, is that a comet is coming back, a big one like Halley's Comet, and everyone's outside ready to watch this amazing comet, except some scientists who are about to lock themselves in to a fortress so they can't get whatever it is that is about to happen. They even suggested that a comet like this wiped out the dinosaurs. But Night of the Comet is kind of a comedy more than a horror movie. So the harsh part is everyone is mostly wiped out, except for the people who were staying in some sort of a metal or steel cage while the comet was going by. Everyone else was ready to party. The movie shows Regina and Samantha, two sisters who randomly survived this event through different circumstances. But the people who got a small dose of the comet, they turned into these zombie-looking creatures. Except the zombies had a brain still. They still had willpower. They weren't stupid, like most zombies are, but they were killers. So you had to watch yourself when you were near them. And of course, Regina, Reggie, and Sam, Samantha, aren't the best survivors of an apocalypse. They're kind of silly, but their father did teach them how to survive with guns. So they knew how to handle themselves. So as they both finally come to realize, the end of the world has happened. There are zombies and most everyone is gone. They look for a place where they can find other people and they hear a voice on the radio. Maybe we can go to the radio station and see who's there because this station is still going on. Someone's putting on the music, right? Nope. When they get there, they find out that the radio station was automated and that there was nobody putting these songs on. And so no one was there. But it was a pretty good place to hole up for a little bit so that they can figure out what to do next. Hector Gomez, played by Robert Beltran, comes into the show. And he was driving in a truck. That's the steel that protected him. While his girl that he met got attacked by a zombie and he ran off. And then he looked also for the radio station to see if he could find other people who were still alive. After they get to know each other a little bit and realize they can trust each other, he decides that he needs to go to San Diego to go look for his parents. And he doesn't find much there. He collects a few personal belongings, but finds out that his house is abandoned and there's just a little zombie kid running around. So while Hector is in San Diego, they decide the best thing that you could do, what anyone could do in the 80s, is go shopping. You don't need a credit card because now everything is free. To the tune of Girls Just Want to Have Fun, they find their nearest department store and start shopping for new outfits. And boy, Reggie, Mary Catherine Stewart always comes up with the best outfits. But then they realize they're not alone. There are zombies inside this department store and then they are captured by it. But who saves them? A bunch of scientists would lock themselves in to a science unit made with steel to protect them. Except one thing happened. Someone left the air vents open. So while they weren't immediately affected, they're affected now and are slowly turning into the zombies. And one kind of sad point, Samantha realizes that there's one man left on Earth and 
he's in love with her sister. Now she's missed out on any shot of meeting the love of her life. So now when the scientists come, they take care of the zombies that had captured our two shoppers and decides to test them to see if they have the disease from the comet. They take Reggie back to the science compound. Meanwhile, they see that Sam is itchy. She has a skin rash. And so they determine she probably has it and she's going to die. The truth of it is she gets skin rashes when she's nervous. And well, when you're in an apocalypse, it's pretty easy to be nervous. So at this point, they leave Sam alone at the place, pretend to knock her out so the other scientists think they killed her, and then they go back to the compound. Meanwhile, Reggie is there at the compound being tested by blood to make sure she doesn't have this disease, and maybe her blood could be used along with some other people's blood, a few kids too, real creepy, to make a serum that will bring the scientists back from the edge so they never turn into zombies. But Reggie, being sarcastic, gives them all the wrong answers and gives them a runaround. Again, her dad taught her how to handle herself. So she figures out what's going on around there, and she decides that she's going to fight back against the scientists and get the heck out. So they take over the compound. Hector comes back, and they all get out, leaving the scientists behind. And they rescue the two children who are also there, about to become blood donors, and escape the science compound. Then Hector gives the final farewell as the scientists start to turn to zombies. So now we cut back to the end of the movie and you can see that it looks like they had just gotten married. She's taking pictures of her, Hector, and the two kids. Meanwhile, Samantha is just not having any of it and she decides she's going to cross the street and they tell her that they have to uphold society and be a representative of the future of society by not crossing against the street light. She thinks it's ridiculous. There's no one even there anymore. Why do we care about streetlights? Well, we have to be a good example. And just as Samantha crosses over the street, there's a guy with a cool car. He says he has 23 of them now and wants to go out for a drive. So there is just one more boy for Samantha. And there's our feel-good ending that we have. It's a silly movie for sure. It's a very 80s movie. And it's a cult classic meaning that you only really watch it when you're looking for something really weird, a little bit stupid, and kind of funny, a little bit like Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. But the question is, what lessons can we learn from this post-apocalyptic movie? One, don't trust what everyone's going to say. If everyone says the comet's fine, it doesn't necessarily mean the comet is fine. Two, try to find the people that you love just like the two sisters got back together right away so they could support each other. Three, look for other people, just like they went to the radio station to see if they could find other survivors. And because the radio station was still on and it attracted people who weren't zombified to the radio station as well. Next, make sure you have defenses. There were plenty of ways that our little group of friends were able to fight back and survive the zombie apocalypse. Five was advice given by the two children when the scientists try to put the children to sleep. Daddy says, never breathe things from strangers. That's great advice. Six, make sure you have a plan to reestablish society. Again, when the zombie apocalypse happens, a very few people are going to set the standards for our next civilization. So my challenge to you is think, If you were going to start society over again, what would be the rules and things that you would uphold in order to build our next society? Okay, that's a little bit silly. All right, everyone. Thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember that you can always email me at jill at startwithsmallsteps.com. I would love to hear from you. That I'm interested in hearing from you if you like podcasts where I talk about a book or podcast where I talk about entertainment or podcasts where I make up my own topic and talk about something in a composite way. I'm interested to hear what you're interested in hearing about. And remember, our step through the apocalypse into the next world starts with small steps. <laughs>